wouldn't you love to be able to do that? Well, I think it can happen. I genuinely do, especially if you've been putting in practice. Now, I've released this video uh, straight off the back of the other one, so if someone's a little bit more experienced and can blow through those chords, they've been able to go to this one, but the rest will subsequently come out a week apart, so you're going to have to be patient, even if you are a little bit more advanced and wanting to move quicker. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today uh, in today's Rockabilly lesson, so this is my beginner Rockabilly series, and this is lesson two. Last week, we or last lesson, I should say, we looked at the E chord, the A chord, and the B7. Now, hopefully you've practiced that almost till your fingers have bled. Uh, maybe you've practiced hopefully half an hour a day. And if you're really finding that impossible, even 10 or 15 minutes. And if you're finding that impossible, this might not be for you. And that's just an absolute reality that um, if you're not wanting to do, I, I don't mean if life's getting in the way, but I mean if you're just not wanting to do that, that kind of means you're not wanting to play guitar because I still have to practice things after 30 years of playing. And it's kind of just the way it is. I really want this whole these lessons to be really honest and no BS because there's so much, so many uh, courses and stuff at the moment, you know, that they're unlocking the guitar and, and these guys are telling you that there's hacks. There's no hacks. There are absolutely no hacks. The only hack is a lot of practice. Anyhow, uh, so, in, yeah, we did the E chord, the A chord, the B7. We talked about squeezing them and hopefully getting comfortable um pressing down all at once and, and then maybe thinking about changing between those chords. So today uh, I'm going to help you change between those chords in a little bit more of a rhythm. Uh, but first, uh, I want to show you guys the minor pentatonic scale so we can start thinking about some single note stuff too because we want to be doing that stuff as well. Now, if you have gone straight to this lesson and you haven't practiced the other stuff, that's okay because this is going to be really useful uh, and it's different. So it's sort of like another thing to practice. So. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, hit the sixth string open, just like that. We're going to take, that's the E string, we're going to take our third finger or our ring finger, and we're going to place it on the third fret of the sixth string. Remember to keep your thumb back of the neck, pointing towards the roof, like I mentioned in the last lesson. And I want you to play the third fret on the sixth string, just like that. So we play E, and then we're actually playing the note G here. Now we play the A string open. Then we play the second fret. This is on the fifth string. And with my second finger. So notice I've switched to my second finger. We're going to play the open fourth string. That's, that's the note D. We're going to play the second fret on the fourth string. That's the note E. I'm going to play the G string. I could have just said third string. Uh, and that, so that's the open third string. And I'm going to put my second finger on the second fret of the third string. That's the note A. We're going to play the second string open, that's B, and then I'm going to play my third finger on the third fret of the second string, that is D, and I'm going to play the first string open, and then I'm going to play the third fret uh, on the first string. And that is the E minor pentatonic scale backwards. Now I'm going to put a link in the description below. You can go straight to my Patreon page. Uh, I might put something straight to the website as well where it's free. You just go to it and you can get the tabs for this as well. Um, I'm hoping that you know how to read tabs, but I'm sure there's probably some great resources on that. So do um, go and make, make sure you understand that before you bother grabbing the tab. So we want to do that backwards as well. So, that, so I'm just going to read it out like a tab. So we're going three... O on the first string, we're going 3 O on the second string, we're going 2 O on the third string, same on the fourth string, second, uh, fifth string, same thing, 2 O, okay, and then 3 O on the sixth string. And your goal is to practice that so you can do it fluently. Uh, later we're going to introduce alternate picking, but for now you can do it with all downstrokes if that's what you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be quick, it doesn't have to be this speed, but it does have to be consistent. A walking pace, if you will. Okay, so I want you to practice that, okay? That's it for that for today's lesson. Let's talk about what I want you to do with those chords that we did last week. All we're going to do today is strum a chord, one, two, three, four, and we're going to count just like that, okay? So we're going to go one, two, three, four, 
three, four. One, two, three, four. One. My bad. I actually want to go back to E. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to E. One, two, three, four, and B seven. One, two, three, four. Now here's the thing. As soon as you get to two when you're counting, start changing, okay? So one, two, three, four. Two, we're coming back, three, four to the E. One, two, now we're looking for the B7, four. Now if you get the chord ready early, don't strum it. You have to wait to one when you do that exercise. Even if you're counting it yourself, that's fine. Keep it consistent. Okay, so the point here is to start to produce some pressure. Okay, so when I say one, you've got two, three, and four to change, but you have to get that, you, you have to strum on that one, even if the chord's terrible, okay? We want to put you under some pressure. If it's falling apart and it's not working, that's okay. Just continue practicing the method we talked about in the last lesson, um, or count slower. Give yourself time, okay? But we need to create some pressure because then we start to use the faster part of our brain. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I'm trying to get you uh, to scramble slightly if you need to and watch that practice get involved. Uh, that will take a good couple of days before you'll see the result of that, perhaps a week. Um, but give it a go. Okay, sometimes with some students it happens pretty quickly. You know, as long as they've practiced accurately to begin with, um, your muscle memory can pick stuff up really quick. Some people quicker than others. You know, I, I never used to believe in talent. Um, but there is definitely some, some aptitude involved in this stuff for some people. But don't be disheartened if you're finding it challenging because, uh, you know, hard work beats talent every time. Not every time, but most a lot of the time. So that's the, the main thing I want you guys to practice is counting that one, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, E. If you get good at that, strum twice and give yourself uh, only two beats to change. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, obviously the next thing is three strums and then when you're really confident, you can go to four strums, okay? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's really where you want to get to, but don't rush to that. You know, I mean, have a go, but if it's not, if you're just not there, stick with three. If you can't do three, stick with two. If not, stick with one. If, if changing and counting, you're just not able to do it yet, just stick with practicing the chords and relaxing your fingers and lifting your fingers and developing that confidence. Um, or just count really slow. Give yourself heaps of time. We just need to create some time constraint uh, to teach your brain that there is a timing involved. Okay, This is something that I developed myself over many, many years, and I found it really successful um, helping students, even um, you know doing complex chords for more advanced students. We've drilled this stuff, and it's amazing. So I hope you find that really helpful. This was lesson two. Please let me know what you think. Leave some comments. You know, Is there something you want me to do better or different for next lesson? I You can... I'm not offended. Just let me know, okay? We, I want to do the best thing for you guys. Um, you can, If you've seen a lot of my other videos, you can probably see how animated I am doing this because I've done this a billion times. It's crazy. I haven't done this already. And you know what? I was thinking about it the other day. I have done more than 10,000 hours of guitar lessons, and the majority of them would be more on the basic side. So I hope that's coming to the fore, and I hope you're enjoying it. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.